With all the issues in the world right now, we need as much help as we can get to reach the 17 Sustainable Development Goals defined by the United Nations. I hope you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, Google it now. From human rights issues to systemic racism, pollution, climate catastrophes, and more, there's a lot to choose from if you're gonna focus your energy on making a positive impact, like I do. For me, I choose to focus on SDG 12, which is centered on responsible production and responsible consumption habits. Why? Well, I've learned that one of the biggest reasons why we're in this catastrophe right now is because of how we consume. Currently, we're extracting more resources than Mother Earth can part with and making her a giant global trash bin because of our lack of resources to manage the issues caused by poorly designed products that we buy and consume. It's all driven by our feverish desire to want more, more, more. We've become inundated with a see now, buy now culture and driven at great speeds into addicting, ultra convenience, yet supremely destructive linear economies. The amount of waste we generate is mind boggling and it's affecting everything in our environment. The problem, well, it might be too large and too vast to address all these issues inside the few minutes that I have with you, but I do know this, much of the issues we now face have been created by us humans, you and me, and our consumption habits. So imagine us vehicles for making money are also vehicles for making a big mess. Think of it this way. When the goal is to make as much money as possible for these companies, that means they want to sell us as much stuff as possible. And most of it is probably stuff that we don't need. Making it cheap, making it disposable, and making us want it. And guess what? They make new versions so we just keep buying, keep spending, and keep creating waste. Now, since this is a race to the bottom line, companies use all of these fancy tricks to lure us into buying. How do they do that? By making us really, really, really want it. The more we want it, the more they make it. The more they make it, the more they sell it. The more they sell it, the more we buy it. The more we buy it, the more it breaks. The more we throw away, which creates a disastrous system of waste. It's broken. Absolutely mind-boggling, I know. But guess what? It's not always that way, but it's safe to say that majority rules in the consumer product space and certainly the fast fashion space. But recently, consumers are waking up and they're demanding that products are better for people and better for the planet, which I think is pretty awesome. We do need to move fast, though, because if we're going to reverse the dangerous cycle that we're in right now, we need a powerful tool to combat the disastrous cycle that we're in right now. We need to create a, an economy of caring, one that benefits people, one that benefits planet, and one that also has a healthy profit. So people can have a quality of life that empowers and regenerates instead of destroys the people and planet. The good news is that more and more people are learning that having a livable planet is really important, especially amidst all the craziness that's happening right now. They're learning that one person does indeed have the power to create change in the world and cause a shift. It's true. Now, I know we all have great ideas, but going from idea to execution and then to adoption can be a very peculiar journey. Let me share a little bit about me. Back in 2013, I shifted my life from promoting consumption-driven companies. That's really all I knew. I was getting paid to sell, 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 and much of what I was selling was designed to fall apart and also had supply chains that were abusive to the people and planet. Lucky for me, I had an existential crisis. <laughs> In retrospect, it's a very good thing. Why? Because it got me to see the power of the sharing economy. Sharing economy, that's right. I discovered clothing swaps. Clothing swaps, they're great for the planet because they pull us out of this disastrous cycle of consumption almost immediately. And when I discovered it, it was like magic. It took over my life. I was so empowered by what I discovered that I pretty much gave all of my material possessions away. And since then, I've gone from one swap to creating a community of swappers, which has created swapping events around the world. And now it's inspiring people, schools, companies, businesses, much like you and me, in over 100 countries. That's so much swapping. That's so much positive impact. Now, don't let me fool you entirely. <laughs> It wasn't that easy. I fell on my face many, many times, and the business model changed a thousand times at least. But one thing always remains. That's tapping into the hope and the human desire and 
channeling it towards good and knowing that in order for me to get people to want to swap, I have to show them that they really, really, really want it. But how? How am I going to do that? One day it hit me. I'll use the same tools that those companies use. You know, the ones that created this mess. I'll use that tool to change the world, to cause a human shift in behavior, and I'll make people want to swap. And that's when it hit me. It's like I discovered another galaxy or an underwater civilization when it happened. It was mind-blowing. And I promise me you're going to agree with me when I share it with you. It's these three words and three, three words only and a clothing swap. That's all I had and it changed my life. What do you think the three words are? I'm going to tell you. Make it sexy. Come on, Patrick. How do you do it? Lead with love. Like my mom often says when I'm crippled in a ball of anxiety laying on her floor, honey, you can lead with love or you can lead with fear. And then when I think about it, I usually get calmed down. Let's examine this for a moment. Love. Well, we all want to have it. We all hope for it. We all wish for it. We all crave it. Most of us share it. Most of us give it. Well, that simple principle applies to pretty much everything we do. And let's think about this for a second. How many of you love a pair of shoes? How many of you love chocolate? Or how many of you love looking good? A little bit deeper, when we're talking about sustainability, the environmental, social, and ethical benefits need to appeal to the consumer's values and emotions positively. When you love something, you want it. So, how did I apply this to swapping clothes? Well, have you ever been to a clothing swap? It's pandemonium. My work has literally been done for me in that department. People love getting a deal, and they love having fun, and they love to look good. A swap provides access to all kinds of wonderful options that people can try, like new styles. They can learn about their impact on the environment, they can meet new friends, and as a result, it creates an aspiration for what? More swapping. This little action is dismantling the economy that is designed for doom and gloom and allows humans to be empowered and make choices that they love sharing, like stories and their experience and swapped items with everyone that they know, which is what? Sexy. Story time. <laughs> stories. I love stories. I love them so much. I love telling them. I love listening to them. And then I love telling everyone I want everyone I know about the stories that I just heard, especially if they're funny and especially if they're full of love. Here's the thing though. Stories can be like watching the paint dry if they're boring. In fact, there's a very famous author that agrees with me because he even says, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Heard that before? So Mark Twain may not have been writing about how to make sustainability sexy, but he has a really good point. He understands that persuasion is a powerful tool and it's in today's terms, it's the epicenter of business activity. Stories are one of the most powerful tools that we all have access to. Telling one good story can literally be imprinted on somebody's brain forever. And the way you do it is to appeal to the feel. When you share your information through a story that appeals to the feel, that connects the listener to an emotion. And chances are they'll remember that. And if they don't remember the story detail by detail, they'll remember how they felt when they heard it. Let me give you a couple examples. On a trip to Copenhagen, I was invited to a clothing swap event. Upon arrival, I saw so many people who loved swapping and learned about how great it was for the environment. So I decided to do swaps for a living. Boring! Example number two. Okay, imagine for a moment, you see a giant bowl of chocolate just waiting for you. Go on, close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, imagine it now. Imagine how good it tastes. Mmm, that chocolatey yumminess. Imagine how it smells. Oh, God, I love the smell of chocolate. Imagine how much joy it brings to your eyes when you see it sitting in front of you on that table. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. 
Okay, so on a warm, sunny day, I was in the heart of beautiful Copenhagen. I was invited to a clothing swap in the middle of the city center. I didn't know what to expect when I arrived, and I was completely surprised to see a massive line around the block. Pandemonium inside the swap tent where people were laughing and having so much fun, <laughs> sharing all the items that they just got in the swap. It was fabulous. And guess what? They were all doing good for the planet. And you know what that felt like? I couldn't believe it. It felt just like that big bowl of chocolate. Assessment. Now, which story did you connect with more? See how I got you to think about something that you love, like chocolate, and connected that to clothing swaps? Brilliant, right? So I bet for the rest of your life, when you take a bite of chocolate, you're gonna be thinking about me and all of the positive impact that you can make with the clothing swap, guaranteed. <laughs> I'm joking, but you see, it's true. Stories powerfully connect us, and they've been used for thousands of years to align humans, align our needs and our desires. Real life stories and people and the human experience build trust. It builds authenticity, and the human connection goes far beyond PowerPoints and strategies, I guarantee it. You know, overcoming the atrocities of the fashion industry has actually become one of my passions and my mission. And it involves telling the stories of the swapper and also the journey of the garments, connecting the swapper to the garments and letting them know where it came from and the people who made it and who wore it before them and where it's going after they own it. People fall in love with their items, which has such positive benefits for extending their life cycles. This is the sexy for the swapper because people love to know about the origin of things that they love to wear. My friend Ursula says, loved clothes last. That's simple, right? Ah, simplicity. Simple is better. I know we've heard that a thousand times. We're inundated with messages every day from our devices, from our social media. We've become stimulus junkies looking for that next fix. If you're like me, you may become overstimulated and get anxiety because of all the overwhelming amount of information that you have to process. However, I'm sure that we all have had that aha moment. You know, the one where the light bulb goes off and you get that exciting rush that inspires you, you know, as I mentioned in the story from before, mine was when I discovered what a clothing swap was. I was at a critical juncture in my life. It was an existential crisis. But when I saw the swap, for me, the game changed. It was the most simple act of sharing and kindness that I couldn't imagine. And it is one of the best ways to address the catastrophic effects of the fashion industry that, that it has had on the environment. What's not to love about it? Boom. I was hooked and I was hooked by the simplicity. So that was great for me, but you can't just say simple is better to people and expect them to get it. It has to resonate with them. They have to feel it. They have to love it. And it has to be instant and simple. I've had so many big grand ideas, ask my family and friends that I thought were incredible, but many of them just failed miserably because it was just too complicated. Overcomplicating things confuses things. Pe you lose people along the way. It's simple. You need to appeal to the desires, grant access to that quickly, and create empowerment, and then replicate that over and over and over, and you will have created a simple movement in no time, and you will be the master of cultivation. Cultivation, are we growing a garden? Kind of. Cultivating the connectors in your life like a garden and understanding what connects them can make or break your new sexy idea to change the planet. Growing a garden to feed your family takes time. Growing a lush pasture to feed the community can take longer. But planting and fostering the growth of others is a process that becomes a joy. And with proper care, the energy that you channel into that process multiplies exponentially, I promise. Ask yourself, like I did, what can I do to contribute? I looked at my skills and one thing that I thought about is I'm great at throwing a party. So I decided to make swapping into a party. The beauty of this is that swapping can't exist without giving. 
Everyone that participates has to give something. It's through giving that we feel connected and through receiving that we allow ourselves to be connected to others. Here's the really good part about connection too. When we connect with others, our bodies releases all these cool chemicals and fun things, and the nerve that connects our brain to our heart starts to flutter. This helps reduce aggression, anxiety, and improves our social behavior, and is a primary defense against our reactions to stress and fear. And you know what else? It builds resilience, which is essential when we're navigating these tough times. Connected people oftentimes love culture, they love food, art, architecture, music, and all things that people enjoy. And clothing connects us with a common thread. Our core mission is to provide a place to share clothing, but also ideas and inspiration and tools for action. How did I grow it? Well, we engaged people and asked them to share what they love with us and with our community. We created and provided toolkits for people, simple roadmaps on how to do a clothing swap and how to make change, and connected people to those resources that we provided all over the world. That strengthened our community and created an even larger impact as swappers could activate in their own time and in their own spaces. It was perfect. Many cultures have convinced us that unattainable beauty, unimaginable wealth, and the possession of so much stuff is the pinnacle of success and achievement. Unfortunately, that has created a windfall of harm in every aspect of our lives, whether we'd like to acknowledge it or not. And it's just simply not true. Unless you live a 100% zero waste lifestyle, our consumption habits are going to have some kind of impact on the world around us, which is why we need as many positive actions as possible to help reverse the damage that we created like yesterday. Okay, well, here's what we learned. We're consumers, but we're probably not gonna stop consuming anytime soon. And now that we understand that status is a super powerful tool to shift behavior, especially in the marketplace, we can reimagine how we use it and drive change instead of catastrophe. Imagine the fashion industry, a $3 trillion a year industry. It creates so much front row FOMO. Imagine if the same energy was put into making a sustainable industry instead of a destructive one, one that thrives on regenerative models, thrives on diversity, and creates living wages and positive benefits for everybody, everyone. Do you think it can be done? You better believe it can, and I think it can if we all get behind it. Here's the thing, I want you to make me a promise. I'm reminded by my friend Marika, who has something amazing to talk to me about when it comes to sustainability and shame. You will never ever buy into the fabricated desires created by others who use shame to rope us into fitting in, looking cool, and wearing the latest trend. Not only is it destructive to our souls, but it is also destructive to the planet. Instead, Let's choose to use our collective voices to empower positive change. All right, my friends, there you have it. It's my contribution for you. It's your powerful toolkit to get people to fall in love with making the world a better place. So don't abuse it. Start simple. Don't be afraid to be bold. And whatever you do, make it sexy.